I have a rather intuitive mind, so I respect your very logical mind all the more. I have a lots of questions. Um, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Again, Thank on the prize. And also, welcome back to Japan in Kyoto. Um, My favorite city. Favorite city. Yes. Interesting that you mentioned Densha hmm? in your lecture. Densha? Yes. In your lecture. Um, you came to Kyoto in 1956 and then com came back again in 1978. Yeah, and that was the end of the Densha. Mm. <laughs> and that was the end of the Densha. Do you, uh, what do you remember fondly of living in Kyoto back well, then? Well, the Densha. <laughs> That's what I remember. What do you like about <laughs> Densha? It's wonderful. It just it goes along so nicely all around the city. And uh, you meet all kinds of people. It's, of course, crowded, but you, you see all kinds of interesting things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. I wish it came back. Of course, you don't want it. Mm. To, you prefer the automobile. But the den show was really very you nice. You like the den show. Yeah. Uh, what else do you remember about living in Kyoto? Well, it, 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 it has a mystique about it. It's, uh, there's a certain atmosphere in Kyoto, which of course you don't have in Tokyo or anywhere mm. else, uh, as far as I know, in, mm. in Japan. And uh, you, you know when you're in Kyoto. Mm. It, there's a, uh, it's, uh, all I can describe is as atmosphere. It was very also interesting to know that you liked ukiyo-e prints even before coming to Kyoto. Oh yes, because my uncle mm -hmm. had a store. Uh, what about ukiyo-e prints did you like? It, it was exotic somehow. I mean, uh, it, it opened, uh, I mean, it, 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 in a certain sense for me it was like a manga. Oh, I see. Uh, I mean, it opened the world that, that I had no, no conception of. Mm -hmm. There was this world out there. And uh, I, I wanted to see the world, but I realized that Japan was in, unique in the world, mm -hmm. artistically. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I, I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Well, and, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And um, there are many uh, points that I was curious about in your lecture. First of all, um, you've tackled many various problems. Uh, how do you actually find or decide on which problems you want to tackle next? Because I know it probably takes many years to actually come to a solution or come to some well, kind of close. Well, I don't know how to answer that question. All I can say is it's like you're walking in the woods and a little bird comes and sits on your shoulder <laughs> and says, this is, this is the question, what's the answer? Hmm. <laughs> For example, ice. Ice. Um, we eat or drink ice every day. How did you know you wanted to tackle ice? Well, well there were other people who had thought about this, it's starting with Linus Pauling. Mm -hmm. Because as I, I mentioned, ice has entropy even at absolute zero temperature. Mm -hmm which very few things have. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, entropy should be zero at zero temperature because all the atoms should be locked together and mm -hmm. they can't move. But ice is different. Uh, it's one of the <clears throat> few things that is different. Carbon dioxide mm -hmm. is another one. It, it's frozen state is still full of randomness. Mm -hmm. How about stability of matter? Ah, that's How did you know you wanted to tackle that? Well, first of all, almost nobody in physics uh, thought about this problem until as late as the 50s or 60s uh, when Dyson and Lenard thought about the problem and actually wrote down a solution. It was, uh, the people just took it for granted that uh, matter was going to be stable. You have atoms uh, made up of electrons and nuclei. They lock together in some way, and that's stable. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, if you think about it, why should anything like this happen? Why don't they make some kind of syrup or something? Uh, why, why did they make a, a solid? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they make oils, everything. <laughs> slips around and uh, why isn't it like that? It, well, it can be like that, but it can also be rigid. Mm. So you one day think, why is that? And you yes. decide to 
Actually well, other go on, proceed. Yes, that's true. But other people had already asked the mm -hmm. question. And Dyson and Lenard had given an answer, but it was a complicated answer. Mm. Very complicated, but it was correct, but very complicated. When you think about it, there are many, like dozens or more, even trillions of problems that you could tackle, and you decided on, uh, well, more than most people, but you decided on several problems. You say it's just like a coincidence, like a bird that stops on your shoulder. Yes, it's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but also it's a question of taste. I, I saw, uh, as, if, as the other people did, that this was a basic question. It was an interesting physical question that was clearly going to need interesting mathematics uh -huh. to solve. This, the question was clearly stated in mathematical form by quantum mechanics. The question is, uh, how does the mathematics lead from these basic principles to a solid table? Uh -huh. That's the question. So the question had to uh, stop on the right person's shoulder. That's correct. Who, know, who knows that that is an important, significant problem. You're absolutely right. Mm. I was also um, interested in um, the way you said even in hard science, taste plays an important role. You just said taste. Yes. Is that so? Um, yes. It depends on the what, who actually does the problem. You have to, by taste, I mean, you have to think of, if you're going to spend your time on, uh, on the problem, on physics or any, anything, you have to figure out which, problem uh, needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very, a very important first step. And uh, that's the concept. And so you have to, that's where the little bird comes in. Mm -hmm. So that first step is a very crucial and very difficult step because the bird doesn't land on everybody's shoulder at one at the same time. So you, you have to be lucky. And uh, uh, once you f figure out what the, the uh, what is an interesting question, and at the same time possibly solvable. Mm -hmm. You have to have a good question and a good hope to find the solution to the, and that's how science, that's how art progresses, poetry, everything progresses this way. You have to uh, find a, a, a good entry and a good solution. So what would you say your taste is based on? Intuition. I mean, Intuition. That's what. Uh, that's what it's. Wow. Uh, yes. I mean, you have to make a good guess. Hmm. You have to. Uh, you have to find a good question, and you have to have the ability to solve the question. Uh, um, so you intuitively think, this is a good question, and I also like. This is my taste. Yes. Hmm. That's very interesting. And you have to also think that you have a hope of solving the question. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Do you ever feel or do you ever see um, meaning of life when you are actually um, researching and mm. analyzing? No. No? No, I don't because the, those are too hard. I, I mean to think seriously. I mean, uh, that it's too difficult for me. Mm. It's too difficult for yeah, you? The meaning of life? Uh -huh. yeah, of course, yes. Oh. There are many books written about the mm -hmm. meaning of life, and they're all different. <laughs> for example, um, the, when you talk about atoms, you said atoms are fragile as spider webs, and they attract each other very lightly, yes. and then they retain their own identity. That sort of it made me think, uh, it's, it's like a metaphor of human beings and society. Yes, it We're is. We're all fragile, we're attracted, but we uh, retain the identity, and that's the beauty of society. Yes. Is, is that sort of, like, do you see the similar kind of beauty in the, yes. the matter that yes. you examine? Yes, yes, I, 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 yes, I agree. 
but you have to, I mean, different people see different kinds of, mm -hmm. or get interested in certain kinds of beauty, but that's one of them. Oh. What excites you most when you're actually examining and analyzing thinking? What excites you most in your work? Well, that you, you can, well, the, when you solve a problem. This, this oh. is a very exciting moment. Uh, most of the time when you solve a problem, uh, it goes by in small degrees. And, but once in a while, it happens all at once. Do you remember an instance that? Yes. But yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does not happen very often. But, oh. but most of the time, you, you know that you're making steady progress towards the solution. Mm -hmm. But other times, it, you're not making any progress. And suddenly, you find a way. And that's oh. an exciting moment. That only ha happened to me two or three times. But oh. it's, it's, uh, it's exciting when it happens. How about, what do you do when you are stuck, you feel stuck? Oh, that's a very good question. Watch television, I guess. <laughs> what do you like to watch? <laughs> I don't know, what I find is news uh, on television, mm. yeah. The, Rest your brain, I guess. Huh? Rest your brain? <laughs> Rest, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it makes me realize that there are more important things in the world then mm, no. <laughs> I'm wondering about. Do you have a problem on mind just now? Do, are you working on something now? Yes. Oh. But it's, uh, I'm not ready to try to explain it because uh -huh. I can't explain it to myself. So, really? Yeah, I mean, so it's it So it starts as a seed that what? little. It starts as a seed that small yes. in yes. your head that you can't explain. Yes. And then it grows and grows and grows and wow. grows. But that's a slow process, usually. We will be waiting for... <laughs> yeah. Waiting for, I don't know. Your solution. Maybe today is the day. And I, you will go, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Are you going to have a little time to enjoy Kyoto after this? Oh, I've enjoyed it so many times. But yes, we are planning a uh, uh, day or two to go to see Katsura Rikyo, which is mm -hmm. one of our favorite places. And we uh, thought we might go to Arashiyama, but I think that's oh. a little bit too crowded these days. But, uh, but uh, Katsura Rikyo, we could go mm -hmm. in. We're really looking forward to seeing that again. By the way, when you look at your surroundings or you're touring around, do you feel, do you see things a little differently than let's say your wife or your family, like, do you notice something because, like an occupational disease? <laughs> oh, so we do. Uh, sometimes we are driving in the car and uh, she says, uh, look at the, this beautiful tree. And I say, let's look at that beautiful telephone pole. <laughs> uh, things like that. <laughs> of course, sometimes we see different things. Well, I hope you see Some a lot of- Some people see a hill and mm -hmm. some other people see the trees on the hill. And I hope you see a lot of beautiful things in Kyoto this time. I already have. Thank you very much.